Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So, welcome to the next tutorial of DHCP spoofing. So, before I proceed, let's go ahead and check on Google what DHCP spoofing is exactly and how they actually define it and what is actually the difference and how one can go ahead and spoof that. So, I believe you can see DHCP spoofing is a dynamic host configuration protocol that is a client and a server protocol that automatically provides an IP host with its IP address and related configuration such as subnet mask and default gateway. So as you can see that in time I go and connect to the internet I am all automatically provided the IP addresses for all of these things. Let me just go and open it out to you. I'm automatically provided these IP addresses and the subnet mask and the default gateway and these all things are being done by the DHCP protocol that's dynamic host configuration protocol. So how can you might be wondering how can one go ahead and spoof a DHCP protocol or something like that. Yes we can do that and in computer uh, world we can do anything that we want. So this is one of the layer 2 attacks inside a LAN network that is very dangerous for information privacy and LAN integrity and it is a proof spoofing attack. So this is a special kind of attack where the attacker can gain access to the network traffic by spoofing responses that would be sent by a valid DHCP server. So you won't even recognize whether it's fake or it's original. And this attack is using a technique, again the same technique that's ARP spoofing also called as ARP cache poisoning or the ARP poison uh, routing uh, that's APR and that is a simple LAN attack technique. ARP spoofing will allow the attacker to intercept frames on the LAN and modify the traffic, stop the traffic or simply sniff all the traffic and uh, do whatever he wants. So this is possible because all the communication in LAN is, is now crossing the attacker's interface and this communication is vulnerable to packet sniffing as well. So you might be wondering what would be the uh, difference between DNS spoofing or ARP CP spoofing because they all do the same thing uh, but still they are different ways. Yes, you are right. The reason being that all of them have different faults, uh, uh, faults and flaws and sometimes you may not be able to go ahead with the ARP spoofing or DNS spoofing but uh, one or the other thing always works because there is one or the other fault in a line and you can always go ahead and uh, take down any kind of network. Uh, the only thing that you need would be a proper po open port or a proper way to go ahead and break into that firewall. So uh, that's how it will work. So there are different ways which go ahead and finally lead to the same thing. But uh, one thing can be way too hard but, uh, whereas the other thing can be way too simple even though both provide the same thing. And that's why I will be teaching you DHCP spoofing even though it does the same thing but it has its own different way and this will be far easier than the previous versions. So in short words client PC is sending a DHCP request on the network as you can see over here the DHCP response and this request is a broadcast from all hosts on the LAN and all the hosts on the LAN will receive it. Only the DHCP server knows what this request means and in the normal situation only the real DHCP server will reply to this request. So DHCP server is then replying uh, to the client with messages that will configure the host client PC with IP address, subnet mask and the default gateway. So this is the attacker, the rogue DHCP server and this is the original DHCP server. So when we have an attacker PC in the network. He will stimulate the DHCP server on his uh, host PC, that's host computer. And with this action, he will be able to reply to DNS, DHCP request before the real DHCP server because it's closer to the client host. So it will configure the client host with IP address of the subnet but it will also give uh, to a uh, host false ga uh, default gateway and maybe even false DNS server address. So what will happen exactly is that when the client PC requests for DHCP response, it will go over here and since the uh, attacker's DHCP server is nearer than the corporate server, the attacker will quickly go ahead and uh, give a response back to it before it goes ahead and reaches it to the corporate server. And as soon as it reaches it, the first one reaches the DHCP server, no matter uh, even if it goes ahead and gets back to the server, it will go ahead and discard that because it has already received a DHCP response.
and uh, later on uh, no matter what happens even if it tries to connect the, to the corporate original server again they will not be able to connect the reason being that it has already go, uh, the attacker has already went ahead and uh, poisoned its cache memory and no matter which uh, uh, one it tries to connect it will always connect to the rogue attacker's dhcp server and uh, it will go ahead and configure the client host uh, with ip address of that subnet and it will give out a false default gateway as well maybe even a false dns server address DNS server address and default gateways addresses will both be the IP address of the attacker computer itself and in this manner he will point all the communication of let's say the client host to himself later he will make possible it will be possible for him to forward the frames from the client host to the real destination in order to make the client communication uh, more real and possible so that uh, even if it goes ahead and gather uh, DHCP server will later go ahead and convert itself for ARP poisoning or in other attack so that uh, it uh, this will be the middle pc in the main uh, it will act as the hub and all the packets that will pass it will pass through the dhcp uh, server and then it will go ahead and pass to the corporate server and then the internet and whatever information comes back from the internet it will then go ahead and come back to the attacker and it will be the choice of the attacker what to send back to the person let's say for example uh, this is the internet uh, this is the rogue attacker and over here at the random right side there would be uh, let's say for example boy a and over here it sorry it would be boy b and over here it would be boy a so what will happen exactly is that let's say for example to be a more practical example boy a is using whatsapp on his computer and he wants to uh, tell the boy b to go ahead and uh, he's telling that i have the money for your let's say i have your pocket money your uh, dad has given it to me and this is the account number of your pocket money and he will send it back on this and just go ahead and gather the uh, money from your this is bank account and he will transfer a virtual check over the uh, over the computer uh, but it will receive it to this person and uh, the attacker and he will send back the response that uh, the okay father has not received the pocket money and he will be giving it me to me uh, later on at later point of time so the boy b will go ahead and respond it back to uh, the person it's okay fine i will go ahead and collect it later from my father but it will not reach the client pc directly it will come back to the attacker and the attacker will send okay fine no problem i will collect it from the bank so for both the parties boy a and boy b they don't need to connect uh, communicate anymore since they both will think that their original message has been passed but uh, the original message is only known by the attacker over here the reason being that he knows what is happening and which account number it is and later on he will go ahead and gather the check and he will disappear later on and the people will over here will not even be able to recognize what happened and later on they both will be cursing each other shooting that they are lying and yes that will be the problem between them and so it will be either this person has went ahead and used all the money for himself or it will be him but the attacker no one will even recognize that uh, the, he was there and that's how it works so uh, the attacker can also sniff frames and he can also go ahead and strip off the ssl if the person is using uh, ssh service and as you can see from the picture the dhcp spoofing device uh, is situated in the local area network position so he has the possibility to reply to the client dhcp request before the request is able to reach to the real dhcp server the legitimate server may also reply but if the spoofing device is on the same uh, segment as the client its reply to the client will arrive first and the intruder dhcp uh, reply offers an ip address and supporting information that designates the intruder as a default gateway or the domain name system so what this person will do exactly it is that first it will go ahead and respond it back to itself and the original message will be passed over here but uh, by the time this uh, response the original response the first response comes back from the corporate server the attacker will already have the access and the uh, dhcp response may not even pass through this it may pass if the, the attacker is already connected the uh, response will uh, pass through the attacker's point of view and once it goes ahead and transfers from the attacker's uh, point then the attacker will even know what the ip address and the mac id of the dhcp server are and what are let's say a gateway or default gateway the attacker may then go ahead and spoof its original gateway uh, uh, the same as a DA corporate server so even if the person goes and tries to get the ip address where it was connected it will see the corporate server's original ip address and the mac id which are spoofed by the attacker and they won't even come to know because they will think that it was normally connected and it may be some other problem why uh, they were not able to connect or they have had a loss for some any x amount of money so 
and the intruder DHCP server offers an IP address and supporting information that designates the intruder as a default gateway or the DNS server that's the domain name system and in the case of gateway the clients then forward packets to the attacking device which in turn sends them to the desired destination so this is known as the MITM attack and it may be entirely undetected as the intruder intercepts the data flow uh, to the network but it is not uh, stopping the network traffic because if it stops then the attack then the client may try to connect to the corporate ser server in some other way or he may troubleshoot it and that is not what the attacker wants so he will not go ahead and attacker will not go ahead and stop the traffic until unless it is act actually necessary so the ARP spoofing can also be used for good purposes and very often we are being able to uh, see wireless networks that are redirecting us to sign up page when we want to access a wireless LAN or internet across the Wi-Fi. So network registration tools may redirect unregistered hosts to a sign up page before allowing them full access to the network. It is mostly used in Wi-Fi hotspots or hotels such as McDonald's or something like that when you go over there and you try to access the free internet. They will first redirect you to their own uh, Airtel or whichever uh, Vodafone or whichever uh, internet they are using and they will go ahead and ask you to go ahead and first uh, use your uh, uh, let's say your mobile number to go ahead and register and as soon as you register your mobile number you will get a 6 to 7 digit code which you will have to enter and only then uh, the internet will start. The reason for that would be that uh, any random person can go ahead and use the internet for fake reasons and uh, the person who is actually going ahead and uh, using that, if he uses for any malicious purposes, then uh, the owner of the uh, Wi-Fi or the hotspot will be able to recognize it by using the mobile number until unless the mobile number is also fake and that is also spoofed from somewhere else. So I cannot say that there can be always solutions to all the problems because uh, as uh, the number of solutions increases, the number of problems will always increase. And so uh, it is mostly used in McDonald's and other sorts of network to control the access of mobile devices to the internet and sometimes make user pay for the internet access. So for that purpose they are redirected uh, using ARP spoofing to a device known as head end processor that goes ahead and redirects these things. So ARP spoofing can be used to implement redundancy of network services, a back backup server may use ARP spoofing to take over a server that has crashed and apparently uh, transparently uh, offer re reduced redundancy. So these are the examples that an ARP spoofing is not only used for malicious purposes, it is also used for good purposes. But it depends upon uh, the nature of the person as to how he sees that. So that would be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I will be starting with the ICMP redirection and finally the traffic tunneling and port stealing.